Good evening and welcome to Paul T's World. It's a lovely evening this evening. I prefer to stay quite quiet because we've got the blackbird over there singing. We've just seen the blackbird having a last bit of uh, fat from the coconut. And I'm just going to go straight away to the lilac. Just look at the light on this lilac. So I wanted to show you my English garden in May. It's the first week of May, or it's the end of the first week of May. So we'll see what changes there have been since the April video. It's just a magical time of the day. We've got two blackbirds singing. We've got an email coming in on my phone. We've got the pear tree. Just starting with some little pears. Two pear trees. This is the commis. Again, just starting with some little pears. The plum tree, which doesn't do too well, but it's starting to do okay. Apparently, plums are only formed on two-year-old growth. There's just a little breeze. That's a wood pigeon we can hear in the distance. This is the eating apple tree, James Grieve. It never used to produce any apples until I dug out this little bed. The grass went right up to the trunk and I think the grass took most of the moisture. But since I've dug that out, just done a little bit of watering because it's been so dry in the north of England this last month. So the blossom is still just about there. I can hear insects, bees on the blossom. Here's a Wygela. There are about uh, three or four different Wygelas in this garden. This is the earliest. Oh, one or two still to come out, but it's just past its best. The robin's just come out to have a last feed. He might be feeding chicks. He's been going backwards and forwards all day. Do you like my skewiff commis pear? It was a cheap tree and when I planted it, it didn't stay upright very well. <laughs> but it does okay and it crops quite well. I've got a Clematis montana up the shed. Look at the light on that, isn't that gorgeous? Being a photographer, I absolutely love late light warm late light. So this shed was repainted about two years ago so I cut this Montana all the way back. It's grown up again quite well. It hasn't flowered as well as normal but it's still very pretty and this is a Chinese creeper, a Chinese Virginia, uh, is it Virginia? Chinese Virginia creeper? I'll check the name. I bought this because the leaves go the most fabulous red in autumn. It's 
growing along the shed here. This is the climbing, the climbing hydrangea that we looked at last time. Now you've just got to be a little bit careful with these climbing hydrangeas because they've got adventitious roots, which means they stick to the glass, to the wood, take some getting off. Whereas the Chinese creeper just twines round things to hold itself up. Now in this little woodland patch that I've got, the honesty, the honesty now have virtually finished flowering. We've got hellebores of a couple of different colours. There's that one and then this one. It's looking just a touch sad because obviously these hellebores come out very early in the year. They self-seed all over the garden. Which is somewhat surprising that in the garden centres they charge a fortune for these hellebores but we've got hundreds of them. These are the foxgloves growing up nicely. They will flower next month. All over Britain the foxgloves will be flowering. I've got a Killia mollis here. I think that's how you pronounce it. They're supposed to be drought tolerant but mine never are. Once it gets dry they sag and flop. some ferns. I actually put a fern in the log that I bought but I think that one's died. Here's the epimedium. It has nice nice little yellow flowers and in fact when those flowers come out you can cut the larger leaves because these leaves which are pretty at the moment, lovely greens, they get rather large and so if you cut them back you can see the flowers better. Here are some lily of the valley. I do love lily of the valley. And behind Solomon's seal. Now Solomon's seal look gorgeous at this time of the year. But there is a Solomon seal sawfly and it will absolutely decimate those leaves once the flowers are finished. It looks quite funny actually because it looks like a fish that a cat has finished. And just in front of the Solomon seal is Lords and Ladies. I'll just check up on that plant. I think it's, it's, it's a plant that you find in the British countryside a lot. It has lovely berries at the end of the year. I'll see if I've got any pictures of those. There's ivy growing up at the back there. That's a log pile, little log pile. I planted a little bit of ivy and it's totally covered the logs, which is okay because ivy is really good for a lot of insects and animals. Oh, listen to that blackbird. Let's just go over here. He was singing earlier and he's back. Fantastic sound of spring and summer, the blackbird in Britain. Now on one of my other videos, the early morning, no it was the um, April video actually, someone told me that this was ivy leafed toad flax and that it could get a little bit rampant so I've actually pulled some out and it will then grow back. This is a nice plant that features in walls all around Britain and I can't think of the name of it but I shall get the name and put it up in the caption and here's a hazel tree that I planted. I got it free from the council 
They were giving away hundreds of small whips, as we call them. They're about two feet long, small trees, bare-rooted. And the council had a campaign of getting people to plant trees. And I planted two or three or four of them, different types. I'll show you those later. This is an ornamental elder flower. It just doesn't do that well. It's too dry here for it. That's the ornamental one. And just here I've planted the natural one. Oh, we've got a robin to the right and a blackbird to the left. I don't want to speak too much while they're singing. And this is a honeysuckle. I planted a Clematis montana. I really like the montanas, but it's just not got going. The, the depth of soil here is too thin and it's very sandy and they want a lot of goodness and moisture. Oh, here's the uh, a honeysuckle. It's grown quite well. It's grown right over all these trees. And here's another Wygela. This one is very prolific and vigorous. Not quite out yet. Here's the Spirea I featured while it was flowering. This is a wild hedge really that I planted. I have the compost bins through there and I wanted them tucked away a little bit so they weren't too in view. And also I thought this would be really good for wildlife. I've got field maple here. It's the only native British maple. Lovely, I love it. This is the old apple tree. It must be at least a hundred years old, this apple tree. It's a Bramley. This whole area uh, was a large orchard before the houses were built in the early 1900s. So I've got the silver birch behind. Let's go and have a look because there's some nice, there's some nice light on this silver birch. I'll show the trees in another video, but I can't resist coming through to this one right now. It's a silver birch. Again, I can't think of the name. Jack Mondii, I think. And I will feature that in another video on trees. And while I'm here, I'm going to mention, I keep mentioning more and more, but there's an oak tree there. And that oak tree, let's see if we can just see the trunk. Here's the trunk. I can't remember how many years ago I planted that, but my dad has a large, large oak tree in, in his garden. And I took an acorn. And it's from an acorn. Oh, I don't know how many years ago, but no more than 10 or 15 years. Oh, and here's another silver birch, and I planted that uh, when the council gave these small whips away. And that's a beauty as well. Let's get this oak out of the way. Just look at the light on that silver birch. Now, people might say these trees will grow too big, but an oak tree, you can have it as large or as small as you like. You can just prune it down. You could have it as a hedge if you like. Just about any deciduous tree. In fact, I planted two. I, <laughs> here's some of the leaves of the oak tree. I planted two. <laughs> this was one and that's the other. And that's how close they were. Oh, this is a Forsythia. Planted it for a little bit of colour, but this area here isn't for colour. 
it, this is for a wild area and there's some leaves from the the field maple bit of holly in amongst here's the honeysuckle that winds its way up here through the field maple and also round the elderflower here. I see some nice moths on, on this honeysuckle. Isn't that pretty? There's a robin singing, I can hear him. Hopefully it's coming out on this audio. We'll just continue down here a little bit just to show you this patch. I, I really like it. And here we have a Gelder Rose, Viburnum opulus. I planted this because the berries, oh, here we are, these are last year's berries. And you read in all the books that it's fantastic for wildlife, this plant, because of those berries. And guess what? <laughs> the wildlife totally ignores those berries. They eat all the other berries in this garden, but they ignore the Vibernomopolis berries. Gorgeous evening light and a robin sing. Whoop, there's a robin. And still the blackbird singing over to the left. Here's a laburnum. In fact, it's two laburnum. Laburnums? Laburnii? Let's have a look. There we are. I've got one here and one here. I strapped them up because they were falling down. And my sister gave me these because they seed themselves. And indeed, here we are. If you want a laburnum, Go and find a friend who's got one and you will find, oh, I don't know what that is, there's about three or four little laburnum here. They can just be dug up, planted, and then a few years later, we've got this. Isn't it lovely? Gorgeous. Past its best. However, I took some pictures when it was at its best and I'll show you them now. We had some big winds this winter, bigger than normal, and the, the felt on the top of this potting shed came off and so I've just popped some stones down to hold it down. Ah, now maybe someone can help me out here. This is a flowering current. It's a magnificent flowering current, or was. It's died on me. It's not totally dead, because as we can see here, what have we got? Where's this? Yeah, it's coming out from down here, and there's a little bit more here, and that one's alive, but the rest, last year, Fabulous. And this year, three quarters of it's dead. So I don't know why. Why did, why did it die off like that? Got a hydrangea here. This is from a cutting I took of this hydrangea. It's a lace cap hydrangea. It's absolutely gorgeous. What's interesting about this one is part of this hydrangea is pink and part is blue. Now, generally hydrangeas are blue when they're on acid soil and pinker when they are on more alkaline soil. 
Now, what I've noticed, and I haven't noticed before, is this. If anyone can tell me what's going on here, I don't like the look of it, and I'm not sure what this discoloration of the leaves is. There's a Mahonia. First time I've grown Mahonia. I saw this in a friend's garden and it turned a lovely colour in autumn. So I got one. These can just be cut back as you like after flowering. Because they are quite vigorous. But I do like the vigorous plants. You can always cut them back. But if a plant isn't vigorous and doesn't get going, then that's not so good. And here is the other Spirea bridal wreath. It's looking old. I have cut it back a third out each year, but even though it's still alive and there's nice new shoots there, it's not as it was. And I'll put up a picture of how it was because that was gorgeous. Here we have a Cotinus uh, smoke bush. Yeah, really like this. Very small leaves. Some of them have got very large leaves. And here is London Pride. I use it as an edging. Because often the soil is so thin, I need something to build it up. And so I use London Pride. Daylilies. I wasn't familiar with daylilies. But I am now. They are rampant and they grow up. Let's see if any are here. I've kind of mown them down a little bit now. They're growing up all, all through the lawn. White lilac. Again, this was a, a seedling from my sister. And it also half died a couple of years ago. Don't know why, but this is the bit that was left. I cut all the dead branches away. And of all the lilacs, it seems as though this one scents better than all the others. The white one. Oh, and there is another laburnum. And for some reason, that one, can you see the flowers? They are short. The racemes are so short and I don't know what's happening with it. It seems to grow okay. A few years ago in a gale it blew over and I had to chop half of it off. It's now regrown but hopefully later it will start to flower as the other one does. Oh I'm just going to go, oh here let's have a look at this. This is obviously a mountain ash, a rowan and again the council were giving away these small trees and this is one of them. This grows fabulously. This, this produces incredible amounts of berries and in the autumn we have lots of birds coming here taking the berries. I have another row and just on the other side of the garden they always eat the berries from that one first and then this one. Same berries. The reason I'm coming back over here is I forgot to mention, and it's in some nice light there, a tree I planted probably, oh, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, 13 years ago. It is a liquid dambar styrosifluor warplesden. I think I've got that right. And I got that because of its autumn colour. Now there's a little blue tit probably on this GoPro you can't see because it's a very wide angle. There's a little blue tit in there and the blue tit sings its head off at the top of that tree every day. And they are nesting in the nest box on the house. This is a camellia. 
Obviously it flowered, it flowers in uh, well February really. It didn't flower so well this year. I think when I pruned it, uh, it didn't recover enough. But it flowered okay. Oh, let's have a look at this clematis here. Very easy to grow these clematis, I think. Are they clematis group three? It's a um, Bill Mackenzie, and I simply cut it down about here in the autumn, or actually normally I do it in uh, March, and then it grows up right up here. I'll pop a picture of it uh, in flower, yellow flowers. It's my favourite month of the year. In England, May is just fabulous. I hope you've enjoyed my video today, our little walk around the garden in May. May is a, such a nice month of the year. And if you have enjoyed it, please hit the like button, subscribe, there's a little bell apparently, all those things that you have to do. If you could do that, I'm going to see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.